Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's March 24th, Sunday's edition, and Miss Vegas is going to tell us and go through the watch list with us. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, and let's see what the market will do for us tomorrow. It's been kind of rough. Um, so the stocks we're going to talk about are Life. We're going to talk about Adam, A-D-O-M. We're going to talk about Cron because they got earnings coming up. We're going to talk about INFU, AVP, and we're going to talk about Levi's, the IPO. So let's get started. We will start with Life. Now, Life is a biotherapeutics company. They're engaged in the clinical development of innovative medicines based on immunological pathways. Does anyone even know what that means? <laughs> I sure don't. <laughs> um, so they do all kinds of, um, I guess, they, they look at clinical stage uh, development for immune engagement for lung diseases and other immune-mediated me diseases. So um, the nice thing about this company that I will say is that um, they do have cash on hand. And you know what? That is really important for a company, uh, especially biotech companies, because too often we've seen that they've had to do reverse splits and offerings to gain to have cash um, in order to continue with, you know, especially phase two trials. Um, this company uh, did release a PR on the 21st that they will be having a presentation. Um, they're actually going to be attending at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Um, they're going to be attending there March 29th to April 3rd at the Georgia Wolf Conference Center in Atlanta. And uh, Dr. Data is the professor of biochemistry and molecular biology at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And he's going to be doing a presentation on the immunity in the microenvironment. So this could create a little bit of movement in the stock. Um, and I guess he'll be talking about the actual a drug trial, which is called ATYR1923. And it's a treatment for patients that have lung disease. And he'll be talking about the progress, the proof of concept in the phase one and two trial evaluation. And I guess um, he'll be sharing so far, I guess, the information um, that's uh, from these trials. So that's interesting. And I'm sure there'll be some uh, I guess, uh, action maybe around the stock potentially based on the fact that this presentation's coming up. And the presentation, by the way, is from 8 in the morning till 12 noon. I mean, four hours? That's a long time. Um, so, Jim, over to you to talk to us about this life chart because that looks pretty good to me. Yeah. Well, here's your yearly chart here. We had a yearly high of 305. And you can see that it's been on a downhill climb here with a double bottom. Well, not really a double bottom, but more or less 37 cents back here when we had that big crash back in December. And then she popped up and she hit that little resistance at 66.44. So this is, you know, this stock's under a buck. It was at 305. And I'm starting to see some upward movement here in the last four days or the last couple weeks on this stock for sure. So let's bring this up to the 20 day. I drew a few trend lines on here already, and I'm going to fine-tune it for you. Try to find some good supports and resistances here. So we've got a support level right here at 53-something. And then another one right here, right around the... Kind of hard to say. I'm going to make it right there around 51. And then another one right down here, right around 49 cents. So we got the moving averages in the right direction. We have the 20 up on top, SMA, with a 50 the 100 and then the 200 down here at the bottom on a 20 day chart. So let's fine tune it and bring it up to a one day. Well, let me bring this back. I've seen something that I've just missed there on that 20 day. And I'm going to draw a trend line right here at the 5549 area. Yeah, right there. And then I'm going to draw another one right here at the 5776. Could have gone a little bit higher with it, maybe around 58. So I'm going to erase that. Put it right there around 57.94. Fine tune that like a fiddle. So they're going to bring it up to the one day. And as we look at the one day, they're still pretty much in the right order. You got the three major moving averages raising up. 
the 20 curled down a little bit after hours but it had a real nice Friday so I'm going to draw me another trend line right here at around 54 and then another one right here right around 57 so this is on the three minute chart we've got the 20 day right here and that's about where we are right now at the 55 cent level it did close at 55.81 I do like the little volume that came in at the end of the day for that spike so this this stock does pull back probably look around 54 maybe 53 cents with a low of 51 and I'm going to turn this into a red line so I can remind myself come Monday to watch this stock and know about and I'm going to draw another trend line right here right around the 52.89 area so let's pull up the 20 day one more time we got a resistance high that we need to meet up here at 61.54 with a 20 day high of 63 cents I'm going to draw a trend line right there what I'm seeing right now is low support of 51 dollars 51 cents 51 cents and I hate to see it go any lower than that it can it could drop down here to 45 but that would be a very strong buy in this channel area of 45 to 47 cents that would be a very strong buy and then you could probably bring it up to this 57 58 cent area and sell it or run it up a little bit higher and see if you can break these other new highs that I have on the year's chart and I'm going to show you that one more time and then I'll be done with this and I'm talking about this channel right in here between 67 and 84 cents so your next target if we break this 200 SMA right here at the 66.5 area you could run it up to that 84 cents and that's going to be a real hard resistance to break but once it breaks that you can bring it on up above a buck to about 127 you see where that channel is right in there so yeah we've got a hurdle to climb here but I do believe this stocks on a, on a comeback and it needs to run up here to the 200 day SMA which is right around a little under 67 cents and that's life and like she said Miss Vegas said it does have cash and a lot of these stocks that are down here in this range don't have cash they usually throw an offering out on you but I don't think we'll see that with this trade here that's probably got why it's got that momentum going for it and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Adam yeah, so Adam as an ADM. Adomani sounds so Italian, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's not. Um, so, this stock here, uh, what I liked about it uh, was the fact that um, it's got, you know, it's been up. Like, if you look at the actual chart, this stock keeps going up, 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 up the last uh, three, four days here. It also had a nice support at the 20 day um, daily moving average. And, um, you know, Adamani here, they're involved in the manufacturing and design, uh, and also they install um, zero emission electric drivetrain systems for fleet vehicles. So they're helping with um, the, the transportation trucks and also with the school buses. Um, they also, um, they're in the, uh, you know, clean energy. So they also have like... Uh, quick install kits uh, basically <clears throat> excuse me um, they allow you to convert your I guess units that you have in your vehicle and they actually help you with um, it's just basically click and go is what they say here um, they have zero emission electric designs and very interesting website they have also batteries um, you can you can check what they do but this is really more for commercial products um, but, uh, you know, really what we like really is this chart here. So let's just actually talk about this chart because, you know, there is no news on the on the company. There is no news on the stock. Um, you know, at one time, this stock was pretty damn cheap. I mean, this went, I think, at one time very, very low, like low 20s. So it's starting to um, be on a different channel right now. So, Jim, maybe you talk to us about what's happening here with uh, Damani. Yeah, they did come out with a little bit of news on the 18th that they entered into a sales marketing agreement with Zen Solutions so that was a little booster for the stock to get it up a little bit and this is a very inexpensive stock for what they do and I'm gonna pull up the chart right now and this is a yearly chart with a high of 197 I was playing around with this stock when it was up there around a dollar at one time when it ran up we had this big breakout last year about this time oh back 
on 518 where it ran up and had a resistance level of 174 and we tried to hit that once before and it never did break it and it finally pulled back to 15 cents and so this is a stock that I do like I do believe that it's starting to pick up a little bit of volume volume bars don't look too hot on it right here right now for the yearly chart but let's pull up the 20 and I just started drawing me some trend lines on this baby and there's a support level that we had on a um, little support channel that we had on Friday and Friday was a pretty bad day but this stock ran up pretty pretty good on a pretty bad day from 38 all the way up to 44 so that's a good little uh, six cent bounce right there and when you're dealing with penny stocks like this that's a pretty big run she did pull back a little bit after hours to the 200 on the 20 day one one hour chart and we did have a resistance up here in this area of right around 44.89 up to 46.91 and I'm going to pull up this one year chart one more time just to look at the moving averages real fast magnify this and see where we are on these moving averages the 50, the 200 day is at 56 cents and the 50 day is right down here right around 33.35 so they're not in the Pacific order I like to see them in but I do see the 20 day rising and we did kind of close up right around that 38 here we did pull back to that 20 day SMA support on a yearly chart of 38.7 now I'm going to pull up one day three minute I usually run when I'm watching the stocks during the day I'm usually focused on the one minute daily but on the three minute I can show you a little bit better trend lines on this on this trade and I'm trying to find me a little we had a resistance high up here right around 42.79 then right into close after hours we run up to 44 cents and now it's pulled back here to 40 so this could be a nice little uh, definitely a scalper play or even something to hold a small position in and if I was going to hold a small position or a position in this stock I would wait for the pullback maybe to this low area of 38 39 cents I think it could pull back to there and that would be a better position to getting in it than getting in it up here at the high but I do really like the 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 the, the green echo clean that it's bringing to the school buses because if you ever follow these things they're always puffing up that blue black smoke out of them and this just needs this we just need and kids are always going to need rides you know bus rides to school and stuff and plus they will help get into a bigger market so we're going to have the pull back right here we're sitting right now at 40 cents a little little above 40 and we're going to watch this monday if i'm going to trade this stock i'm going to try to get down here at the 38 39 cent level and i'll probably scalp it myself and wait for the big moves to start to happen and then I'll get in for a long-term investment. And that's Adam, A-D-O-M. And it's a good stock to watch for All penny right. stocks. And next then, one. Next one we're going to talk on. about is Cron. Yeah, so Cron, as you guys know, Canadian company. And they're going to have their earnings this week. And it's actually going to be on Tuesday morning pre-market. So I won't be surprised to see option traders looking to buy calls or puts depending on what they think the stock's going to do um you know just a reminder that you know chronos group um did have a 1.8 billion dollar investment from altria and that deal has closed which obviously makes them cash positive um you know altria has a 45 percent stake in the chronos group they can actually exercise their warrants um, up to 55%. And if they do exercise those warrants, uh, Kronos could receive an extra $1.05 billion from Altera. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that um, there are four board members from Altera that were voted into the board for Kron. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Um, I think down the road, you never know because Altera eventually could eventually buy back their stock. Um, and raising the price of its tobacco products to grow top and bottom lines. Um, so that's interesting. I just don't know if down the road, could we see this company scoop up Kronos? Who knows? Like they have the money. Um, and for them to take a $1.8 billion equity stake in the company is huge. Now, what's going to be interesting too, 
<clears throat> is let's see what these earnings are going to do because we still don't know. We will find out on Tuesday morning. Now, Cron, if you guys look at the chart as well, um, you know, about a couple days ago, well, actually more, but a week ago, the stock was, you know, in the $24 range. And now it's pulled back to like 1923. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on Cron? Because it still looks pretty good. Yep. Well, uh, Jim Kramer, my buddy Jim Kramer, not my buddy buddy, but my mentor in a way, um, mentioned Crone first thing out of his broadcast on Friday, and he mentioned that investment that Miss Vegas was talking about at $2.4 billion altogether, which is very interesting to me. That's a lot of money. So they've got the money, and they've got the backers, and they've got the momentum. And I called this stock out when it was at $7, said it was going to run to 10 Then when it hit 10 I said 20 and we hit that magic number on 20 So I'm real, uh, I know this stock pretty well. And I got in position myself Friday after hours on this pullback. We did hit kind of a triple bottom down here at the 1932 level. It closed around that 1933 after hours. I got in around 1943. So I'm down 20 cents a share right now. But uh, I think it was 23. Might have been, yeah, 43. I'm down 20 bucks a share. So, I mean, 20 bucks, period. I just got 200 shares. So I've also been scalping this with options too. And I think, you know, on Monday I'll be looking at some option buys because I do believe this stock's going to go up this week. Did have a pretty hard sell off here. We did have a, a 10 day high of 2234 and it did pull back to this 19 area. And I'm going to pull up this one year chart and show you this nice little run that the stock has had. And it is at a perfect channel right now. Yeah, I, I see if it does dip a little bit more, it's going to dip to around 19 bucks where we had these other pullbacks here and it ran all the way up back up to that 24 high right in this area right in here with kind of another little high right here around 22.87. So I think this thing's going to get back above $20 easily this coming week. We did touch down to the 50 day and we went a little bit below that on the yearly daily right down here just below that but I think it was just an oversold reaction because the way Friday went you know Friday was not a good day the Dow was down 460 points on a Friday so we kind of need to be watching the spy also um, come Monday morning and see which direction that spy wants to go to I do believe that it could probably maybe pull back to 275 76 area and that's on the spy but that's something we need to watch and I think that SPY will give the direction of how next week's market's going to come. I don't think we're near anywhere in a recession period at all. I just think it's a big overreaction on the global economic condition. So this is Cron. I got picked up a little position on it. I'm going to pull up the daily three minute. Just a real hard sell off came in Friday. And I've seen these stocks do this before and bounce right back up. So that's what I'm taking my interest in. I do believe we're going to get above that 20 area. I have a 2007, $20.07 uh, pivot point resistance line. And if we can break that 2007, we're going to run it back up to this other that we were at pre market Friday morning at 2058. And that'll be a nice little trade for me if that happens. And that's going to be Cron. And I'll also be looking at options come Monday morning. And the next one we're going to talk about is F N or excuse me I N F U. Okay, uh, Infu. So this is Inf I N F U stands for infusion. Infusion made easy is their trademark, and this company is a healthcare company that provides infusion pumps uh, for patients in the home or oncology clinics or ambulatory surgery centers. They serve all fifty states and also in Canada. And uh, you, can either, you can either buy the pumps or rent the pumps. Um, they provide, um, you know, pain management treatment. And uh, they really are trying to uh, help the opioid crisis as well. So oh, yeah. um, very, you know, very big problem in the, in the world. So um, this stock here, uh, when we were looking at this one, this INFU was very appealing to me. And I liked this one uh, because 
the chart made a new 52 week high and i like that it closed at the 52 week high i like that it's got uh room to probably still have a bit of a continuation here the stock is overbought so i'm hopefully looking for a continuation come this week uh still priced under five bucks so i like that as well and uh jim let's hear about that chart she's right about the 52 week high and i'm drawing a trend line right now to these lower support levels right around 417 just on this little trend right here but I do see a channel as we're moving up. One year low was at 240, and that was pretty much right there. At what, what year low at the beginning of where we are today. And now she's ran up all the way to 486 with that 52 week high. But I do have a breakout system right here, right around the 427 area. That's where we tried to hit that once before, and it did pull back to a support area right around the uh, $4 area. A little above the four dollar, right around four oh three. So she has had a real nice weekly. Now, when Miss Vegas talks about a week chart on a week, this had a beautiful week last week. It ran from the bottom. Let me see one, two, three, four, five days. It ran from four twenty nine all the way up to four sixty eight and closed with that high at four sixty eight on the chart right here. Only up one percent for the day but still yet this is a slow little mover slow little gainer starting to pick up some volume as I see on the volume bars down here and we're going to pull up the 20 day now and I'm going to try to find me a pullback support which I do have here at the 427 area but I want to adjust that a little bit it could be any of these three trend lines right here with a low support maybe right around the 450 that's the one that I'd hate to see it pull back any more than that and if it did, we might get down to that 440 area. And let me draw that trend line in here so I can remember that Monday. And that's going to be our second low support at that 440. And I'm going to put that in red with the first support right here at 450. And I'm going to make that one also in red. So I've got three different support lines on this just in case. Just in case it wants to pull back. If not, we're going to break out to the new resistance highs of that 52 week. And let's do one more thing here. Let's look at the three year. We're also at a three year high too here at that 468 level. So this is a real good Friday it had. It ran almost 30 some cents on this, I mean on this last week's chart. See from that last week, this is a weekly three year chart right here. It ran from 430 all the way up to 468 that's a 38 cent bounce on the weekly so it's a small gainer small gainer per day but yet it's consistent and it does have a good product and and this is the one we're going to watch infu definitely going to be on our watch list next week and the next one we're going to talk about is for the ladies and some of the gentlemen but mostly <laughs> ladies avon yeah AVP. You know, I got to tell you, like, I, if you guys listening to this, these videos way back from when we first started, I used to talk about Avon, and I used to talk about this stock when it was in the 140s. And back then, I actually said, you know, this is the kind of company that needs to shape up, and they're going to look to bring in some new leadership and, you know, try to turn the company around. And you know what? My goodness, if you were listening back then, maybe back around October, uh, look where the stock is now. I mean, I'm just like so impressed with the performance of the, of the stock. Now, it did have news as well. And, uh, you know, the news is that they have confirmed that they are in talks uh, with another company. And do you know who the name of the company is, Jim? No. No? No. Nope. I thought you would know the name of the company. You Not said off the that top you're in... of my head. You threw me off there. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Avon is in talks, and I will tell you the name of the company as well. And I just, it's, I was doing my computer just froze here, so just give me one second. But uh, they are in talks with a new company, and uh, it's called Nat Natura. And uh, they did confirm that they are in talks with Avon. And that if they have any kind of material uh, changes uh, or anything material to share, they will disclose that information. Um, and as a result of that information being confirmed and released uh, to the public, um, 
it obviously did trigger some action in the markets and we can definitely see that. I mean, if you look at the volume that we just had even on Friday, I mean, the stock opened at uh, 291 and closed, you know, at 306 and the volume, look at that volume, over 20 million shares. Uh, March 15, we had something very similar, you know, like 17 million shares volume. So volume has been pretty steady on Avon. Um, you know, we just got it. this 315 is pretty significant. I've seen it go on back in February. So that would be pretty significant if it could break 341. But uh, this stock still looking bullish to me for now. And uh, for those of you that were looking or had this from back in October, November, good for you because the uh, stock's kind of rebounded at this point. Um, and hopefully we'll see if Avon gets uh, an actual buyout from Natura because, you know, Avon will be sad to see a company like this um, go under uh, or not be able to survive with all the competition that's out there. So hopefully they will have some sort of merger acquisition or a buyout and maybe they will uh, still be around. I would hate to see a company like this not exist. So, um, Jim, let's hear about the chart. Oh, man, this is a beautiful chart, Miss Vegas, and we've been calling this out for a good, good while here now. And we even mentioned back here at the end of the year when we had that big sell-off back in December. We oh, yeah. pulled back to one that 130 low, and we were just, I mean, it was a beautiful time to get in this trade. That's when my crystal ball came out. And looked ever, ever since then, from that 142 where we had that double bottom, she ran up and she broke that resistance there at 251 and we talked about it even then and then she had this this yearly high up here of 341 so i'm going to put me a little trend line right there at 341 also because i like that and i'm drawing trend lines as you was watching as miss vegas was talking on this chart i first pulled up the three year and i'm going to have you look at that real fast we had a three-year high of right around seven dollars 696 and to me this stock's been not really appreciated as much as it should be because I think Avon will always be around but it did have that bottom and they are innovating themselves a little bit better now and marketing themselves a little bit better right now too but when times change you got to change along with them and that's what's happening here we did have a nice little head and shoulders right here at the 250 area she came back to the neckline right at 141 which is a double which is a low support and then she, the last day, when it hit that last low double bottom, she ran up and went back to that 341 area and pulled back to support level at 262, which I can see, which didn't go all the way down to this, this headline here. But then, you know, she's up and down, and then Friday she had a real good day again. So this is one to keep on watch. You know, I think you can get in on a pullback on this trade easily under $3 with a low support of right around 292 I'm going to pull up the 20 day and see if I missed anything here, which I always do when I go to a different time frame. I always try to find another support line where they consolidate a little bit and you get a little trend. And I see one right here at the 285 that it runs right into that 100 SMA. We do have the 28 crossing up over the 50 and the 200. So that's respecting that 200 SMA, which is a good deal right there. I would add that in, and then I'm going to put another trend line right here at the 299 three buck area that I mentioned a little bit ago. And I see another little resistance right here at the 318. So I like to see that 318 and break on up to this new resistance level of 325, and they'll have a little little fight between that 280, 325 and 328 area. And we're going to pull up the daily three minute now, and we're going to see what we have here. So this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the pullback right around this area to the three bucks. And we did go drop down below that three bucks after hours, but it bounced right back up to that 306. We did get down here under this 294. And I see another little support area of consolidation right here at 290. So you, you have permission to go ahead and pause these videos at any time, save these charts, draw these resistance numbers and support numbers down. I don't see it going no lower, no lower than 285 for a solid support area, that 285, but then that's a low. 290 is going to be your first support, your, your second, 
and then your first support channel is going to be right around this 292 to 299 and we want to run this up to 318 and we want to hit them new highs and we want to break that yearly high which is right around the 341 area I always use the base of the candle so I'm going to mark it down as 336 is the area I want to I want to call the one year high at because I don't the wick the wick to me is a gift the base of the candle is the strength and I want you to all remember that when you're drawing these trend lines up don't try to draw them off the wicks but it's nice to see them match up with the wicks when they do pull back like it did right here for example you know you can you can see where they kind of pull back to that wick area there and that creates that support of resistance or a consolidation and then I see another one right here I'm going to draw up because I like that in there at that 180 so we got a low so this is it this is AVP we're very bullish on this stock entirely we do like it a lot and the last one we're going to talk about is something that I've been wearing all of my life and I'm <laughs> 58 years old I have well, worn them as a baby. Here, many people wear these, and we're going to talk about Levi's. You know, Levi's uh, finally came back to the markets. This used to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange, then left the markets and finally came back. And this was groundbreaking news about this. Not only is Levi's back, but the New York Stock Exchange has a rule that no one's allowed to wear jeans on the trading floor. And the first time in history that um, they actually allowed for the ringing of the bell to allow all the traders on the floor to wear jeans. And the whole place was wearing jeans. They all got outfitted courtesy of Levi's. And um, even the NYSE president, uh, Stacey Cunningham, was wearing her jeans outfit. So uh, the whole place looked amazing. Everyone wearing their jeans. Um, so the stock IPO uh, had an interesting day. Um, what do you think of the close of that IPO? Because I think people were expecting more, and uh, you know, didn't it went to twenty two twelve was the close and opened around um, Friday at twenty two eighty six. So it's pulled back. So what are your thoughts on this, Jim? Because the blue jeans has made a comeback. People think the stock's way too expensive. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Well, you know, I'm like I said, I wore Levi's to the disco dances. I've worn along with my leisure suits. I've worn them to sporting events. I wear them everywhere. I wear them to work. And you know, the only thing I don't wear them is when I'm sitting here trading. I like to put on some sweats. But uh, um, the IPO came out. It dipped on down to about this. Let me pull up it make sure that I've got this all right I think it's been open a couple of days yeah there we are we did have a, a low here at 2001 and we did dip down there again three times four times on Friday actually that one time right after market so I think the momentum is definitely behind this trade but we did have that good time to get in right down here at that 2101 area 20 bucks 20 or 22 excuse me $22 area and we did have a, a I had a high of 2332 so this IPO we've got to kind of let it ride out and let it kind of consolidate a little bit gather people's interest everybody knows about it everybody's talking about it and um, the only thing we can really say is to watch it next week but we did pull back to that support area of $22 and if it does go below that I think it'll be a, a strong buy I might invest in a small stake of this myself, but I'm going to personally watch it for a week and see where it lands. And if it starts to really break out and pick up momentum, I'll jump in and scalp it. And that's what I'll do with Levi. L-E-V-I. This is a new IPO. We do have a resistance high of right around this 2325 area with a 2332 high pre-market Friday morning. And she did pull back pretty hard here here right into the day and then she kind of consolidated in this channel there's another little spot right there at 2234 so I think the buyers are going to start coming into this trade and they're going to start raising it up and it did to me I think it's kind of high opening myself at the $22 so anything below that and I'm keep 
18 keeps flashing in my head. $18, so. And do you know that Albert Einstein were a leader? No. Yeah, and he also had a famous leather jacket that was made by Levi's in the 1930s, and it was actually sold at an auction uh, at uh, Christie's house uh, for over 110,000 pounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this Albert Einstein wore Levi's, and he had a famous leather jacket made by Levi Strauss and Company. Well, that that Levi jacket, just the Levi jacket itself, not the jacket jacket, but the 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 weather breaker. The jean I, jacket. The jean jacket. I wore that for almost ten years. The same jacket. Well, everyone had. I used to have a pair of those five o. I don't know where they are now. <laughs> That's all I wear is Levi's. But uh, people have those, and uh, yeah, so interesting. So we'll see how we'll keep an eye on Levi's, see how the stock the stock progresses over the next couple weeks, couple months. Uh, again, new IPO, so be interesting to see how it performs. Okay, well. All right. Anything else well, you'd like to thank say, everyone? No, I just want to thank everyone for listening to us and following and subscribing and we're so excited we actually reached over a thousand subscribers so thank you to everyone for being so loyal and for commenting and you know if you're new or you want to share this with someone else please share it uh, again you're welcome to come by our room we have a free two weeks for everyone and there's nothing to lose just come check it out see if you like it if it's not for you it's not for you it's fine, but there's nothing to lose by coming by for two weeks. You know, you might actually learn something or make some good profits. Uh, we've had people come by and saying, wow, this like, feels like a trading school. So we try to teach in real time and try to give guidance. So if you're new to trading, um, we'd love to see you, meet you. I also have some information on a webinar that will be hosted next week, Saturday. I will get the details out later this week because if I tell you guys now, you'll forget. So I'll give you guys the details later this week. And we also have a special guest we'll be talking with later this week as well. Stay tuned for that. And um, please uh, come visit us, uh, message us, send me a message, Vegas at I love stocks.com. Happy to hear from you. Happy to talk to you. And wish everyone a great day and a great trading week. Let's see what the market does for us tomorrow. And we're still, uh, it's still International Women's Day for the month of March, March with all oh, those stocks. Oh, it's Women's Year. It's Women's, women's Year. Year. Oh, well, it says yeah. day here, so we might want to change that to it. Well, no, it's Women's Day once a year. Yeah. I like to say. Every day is Women's Day. That's right. Get used to it. <laughs> so this is I Love Stocks, Sunday edition, aftermarket report. March 24th, 2019, and we love stocks. Have a great day, and see you next week.